Hello, this is Ronald Schindler with VSG Commerce. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about VSG Commerce and then get into the demonstration that we built using Oracle Commerce Cloud. Uh, first, VSG Commerce is a provider of digital commerce and content solutions. We've been around now for over 12 years. And we break our team into really four different groups. Uh, the first is a digital group. And the digital group looks at the creative and user experience of your website. The second group is consulting. And that's consulting folks get into the strategy and the process for managing your site. The third team is our implementation arm. And that really gets into the development of the different widgets and also the integration to the other systems you're going to require as you do your implementation. And lastly, we have our managed services group, which is post-production support, where we'll monitor and support your actual site, provide staff augmentation as needed. All throughout this, we provide a complete list of best practices. So let's go ahead now and let's transition over and look at VSG Health, which is the demonstration environment that VSG has put together on Oracle Commerce Cloud. This is VSG Health, which as I mentioned is the VSG Commerce implementation of Oracle Commerce Cloud that we use for demonstrations. And VSG Health is a fictitious company that specializes in the distribution and sales of medical supplies in the US and Mexico. I have a couple of different businesses set up, one called Wayne Enterprises, the other called Rich Healthcare. And there are some differences to how they're set up, and we'll show you a little bit about that as we go forward. Uh, the first thing I'll let you know is that this is built with a responsive design, so it'll adjust the form factor depending upon if it's a device or a tablet, um, a handheld phone, so you don't have to worry about managing that. Uh, it's also in multi-language, so we have it set up here today in English and Spanish, as I said. We're fictitious company specializing in Mexico and the United States for sales. We'll see where things then move to Spanish language. I'll come back here to English. <clears throat> and the first thing we can do is kind of look at the overall page. So VSG Commerce went ahead and extended out most of the widgets that Oracle, Commer that Oracle provides. Uh, we went ahead and changed the, the header and some of the other featured products here. Uh, header has a little bit more of a flyout appeal to it, and we included other articles that are static that you can get to. Uh, featured products is an area that we went ahead and put together because we thought, well, business users are going to want to be able to maybe drive some of the content that's on the home page. So this featured products widget allows the business user on the back end to easily select the products that they want to appear, and then they show up here on the page. We did the same thing for VSG Health News. We, we knew that companies not only need products on their website, but they also need standard content. So we leveraged the repository, created the widget for VSG Health News. And again, the business user can now go ahead and easily select the articles that then will appear on the site on the home page. So as soon as we start looking at any particular product, uh, especially in the commerce realm, we have to think about search because we have to be able to find our products as easy as possible. So we actually have type ahead set up here. You'll see that we not only get products back, but we also can get categories and brands as well. Uh, Oracle also provides the ability to have your thesaurus out there as well as redirects based upon particular words. So if you type in a word like company, it would go to the About Us page, for example. Another feature of search is the ability to have a did you mean? Basically, it's spell correction, right? So I typed in Autoscope. I forgot the O. It goes ahead and it readjusts it then down to here to pick up the actual Autoscope uh, word that might be out here in the products. Now, I mentioned that I have a couple of companies set up. Uh, currently, I'm as the buyer in Wayne Enterprises, but I've got another browser open here in the back. And the other browser here is for the administrator for Rich Healthcare. And I pulled up, I did a quick search for Autoscope here, and just pulled up uh, the same products. And you'll notice that we have a product here, 1113, and you'll see that we actually have some different pricing. So the pricing is actually different. So this gets back to the contracts that are set up. So when you have a business to business scenario, you're going to need custom pricing depending upon the account that is coming into the site. 
And here, again, Wayne Enterprises gets 10% off the list, and um, Rich Healthcare has actually just got standard pricing. You'll also notice that we have a different catalog. So here under products, you'll see we got a, like three different items here for Rich Healthcare. And if we take a look over here under Wayne Enterprises, we'll see we have the full selection of the catalog. So they're getting product discount and the full catalog. Uh, they're a reseller. The other one's just basically a customer, and nobody's ever negotiated pricing for them. So that's a little bit about how the search can work. Now, one of the things we always want to do, though, when we're, when we're in a commerce site is how do we buy stuff quickly? Because that's the most important thing, especially in B2B. People want to get in. They want to get out. So we created a quick search or a quick order widget. And what we can do now is we can allow customers to just type in their pro product and part numbers and just enter them in and add them to the cart and go. We also took another step forward, though. We said, well, what if they want to import something? And I got this temp CSV here. And you'll see where it has an error that came up. So it added two of the products, and here's that actual CSV file. So these two products down here are valid. The top one is not. And it elegantly caught that particular error and let the user know, hey, you need to make an adjustment. You might want to add this in. But it let them know in a nice, elegant way. That way, if there's any mistakes, they can pick up on it. But once we do have these products here, they come up through our CSV file. We can then add them to the cart, and they'll show up when we see our cart then showing up above and it shows us the actual mini cart here. One of the things we can do also is we can browse for products. So as I go ahead and I browse for products, you'll see that I now get a number of different products back. Now the first thing is all of these items over here as far as the facets on the left hand side, those are included really from the back end. It's a simple click of a button to say I want this particular attribute to become a facet. So it's something you as um, a user of the product don't really have to manage from a coding perspective. It automatically shows up. We'll also see that we have any product information. We can also link to different documents if we want. So the idea of including other documentation is there as well. And we also have availability. So we can pull inventory, and the inventory can come from, uh, in this case, it's coming from Oracle Commerce Cloud. But if we have to pull it from another source of truth system, we can go ahead and do that. Let's click through to the casting tape. And when we pull this up, we'll see that we get our different casting tape here. So one of the nice things is you can also have multiple images that show up. And those images can be tied to the variant SKUs. So here I can say that I want a color of green. And I want a size of small. And now I can go ahead and select those particular items. Or if I want something different. I can pull something different up and say I want it. And I can add some of those then to the cart as well. So the idea is to make it really simple for the user. Uh, we went ahead and extended out the uh, widget for this page to include things such as feature and other media. And other media can be things like uh, YouTube videos, for example. And lastly, we included related products. So one of the things that folks want to know is, well, how do I do my cross-sells and my upsells? Well, we included them here as related products, but you could have them be cross-selling or upselling, uh, whichever way you wanted them to display. So I'll add these to the cart as well. So now I've got my cart up and running. And let's go ahead and let's just do a quick checkout here. So here's my casting tape. And I also put the other products in that came over from the CSV file that we used. And I can just go ahead and check out. And we went ahead, and I only have one contact. It's me, and it pulls a default shipping address. Again, we could have multiple shipping addresses if you want. And we'll use that address. And then if we had some sort of shipping methods, we can use those as well. And then I can say that I want it on account. I can also do it credit card or PayPal. And I can put in the account number, or my PO number, I should say. I'll just put that in for right now, and we will go ahead and use this payment. And notice I can schedule the order. So one of the other items we have is the ability to go ahead and have scheduled orders. So if you wanted a recurring order that would happen on a monthly basis, I could make this a scheduled order, and it would put it on the back end then to be ordered every month. Right now we're just going to do a simple submit order. And here's my order confirmation. And it tells me it's pending approval. So one of the other things that exists is the ability to have a little bit of workflow in terms of the orders. That way people would have to get them approved. So let's go ahead and let's uh, take a look at my order here. We see it's all set up. There's the pricing for it. 
And if I take a look at my orders, it'll show me that this order is also back here under my orders. And it's scheduled pending approval. They're all pending approval, as a matter of fact. But we'll look at the administrator here in a second. And let's go ahead and let's log out as the buyer. And then we will go ahead and we will log in as the administrator and look at some of the administrative functions of the site. Okay, so I'm going to log in now as the administrator to Wayne Enterprises. When I come in, you'll notice it's the same look and feel as, as a regular buyer would have, but I, I do have a little bit of a different uh, access level here under the My Account. When I click under My Account, you'll see I have access to a number of different fields. We'll just go into the My Profile to start. So. Within my profile, I can go ahead and set up, you know, general information such as my password. Um, I can also have my own address, my address book. I can also look at my personal orders, right, things that I've ordered myself that are out there. Uh, we can take a look at any scheduled orders as well. So remember, when we went through the checkout process, we had the ability to say there's a particular order that we want to schedule it. This one here is scheduled to go out monthly, so it's going to recur on a monthly basis until I go ahead and suspend that particular order. If I have any quotes, I can do quotes. I also have project lists as well. So if I want to have, say, a new hospital opening or new facilities opening, I could have a series of different products that I could put into a list and then automatically go ahead and order those. They wouldn't necessarily be scheduled. They'd just be um, a group of products that we would need for a specific purpose. I think the most important things here are user management, for one. So user management is where I, as the administrator can control access to uh, my site. So I can say that I want to have these folks in here and capable of buying. As Wayne Enterprises, these, these buyers here, this buyer, this administrator, and this other user are all buyers or all personnel under Wayne Enterprises. And I can control who, if I want to have somebody come in and work underneath the Wayne Enterprises account. I just click Create New, and I enter in this, the basic fields, and it goes out and allows me then to have a new user. So I just put in the first name, last name, email address, and then it'll go ahead and notify them. It'll send them an email where they can then log into the site with a temporary user, with a username and a temporary password, and then they would reset their password. Uh, lastly, we've got approval settings. So the other thing I can do is, as I mentioned before, if I'm a buyer, I may need approvals on anything I purchase. So I, as the administrator, can go ahead and set approval settings. So what I did is I said, yes, all orders are going to require approvals, and the purchase limit is going to be set to an amount that I choose. I could make it higher or lower depending upon my individual business. And then administrators will be notified when someone goes ahead and makes a purchase that they need to approve those purchases. So that's kind of a, an overview of... Um, this particular site, and there are the pending approvals that, that I just mentioned. So again, if anyone has questions or wants to follow up with me, I'm with BSG Commerce. And again, my name is Ron Schindler, and you'll see my contact information there. Thank you for joining me today. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.